Hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to another live stream here on the Enigmatica 2 server hosted by the Simpletons. I hope you all are well. I have done some work. Not here, but I have done some work. I did want to mention that I do plan on taking some time and really expanding these farms out. You know I have like them all clustered together which is like two crops of each. I plan on turning this whole area here all the way around to this way to farms and maybe even going this direction too. Um, as I go I'm gonna get rid of oil. You can see some oil there. I'm gonna get rid of birch trees as I see them. I just I don't like the way these were made. Um, I've seen some better birch trees and I just don't like the recurrent complex ones. I'm not sure why. Really don't know. So those will go and uh, we will have a larger amount of crops. So the point for this base, um, as you, you know, the starter base, we will keep coming back here because this is going to be where I'm going to be making my food and I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to need to have access to food. The goal for me for the food, and now I can't say I'm actually going to get it, but we're going to try, is to make at least one of all of Pam's foods. Just because I've never done it. It seems it's insane, and it's likely I will do a lot of it off camera, but that does mean having everything grown that Pam's adds to grow. So yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep the fruit trees where they've been growing or if I'm going to make a separate orchard. I would much prefer a separate orchard, but um, yeah, I don't know. I do like the uh, cracked cobblestone lining the different elevations. So we're going to keep doing that and each little little area here, like this chunk of an area here will be one single crop and so on and so forth. We're going to use paths to kind of split larger chunks so that we can have like one crop here, one crop there, and actually just kind of walk to another area. That's that's kind of the plan with this area is for food. We're going to, I think I'm almost done exploring all that Roots has to offer and I'm also going to do Rustic in this area. Rustic has even more crops to grow so I will probably be doing um, another building on this side over here. So I'll need another bridge and I'm considering putting the bridge right here. So we'll have to remove some of these trees but having the bridge go from here to here and then having another building over here and put rustic stuff on this little bit around here. And then of course that also means we can expand the farms if we need over this way as well. We do have a decent amount of rustic crops. Um, they have different kinds of potions. They have alcohols. Um, they have a lot of the different um, cosmetic building blocks that could be fun to use. Uh, so yeah, you know, we've got grapes and that's what the wildberry bushes are from. There's chili peppers, there's tomatoes, there's olives, there's bees. Um, Then you've got these mushrooms that you can collect. I don't think you can grow those. Chamomile. Uh, there's blood orchids. There's, there's things to collect. Aloe vera out in the world. I just don't know how to grow them once you've collected them. But I'm certain there's a possibility. But yeah, we'll be getting into rustic in this area as well. Again, I don't know how much because that's something that some people aren't interested in watching. But hello, Dorothy Curb. So let's go over and let me show you what I have done. If you were in uh, the stream on Wednesday, you could tell that I was I was really struggling to build while you guys were watching. And I've noticed that that's been the case lately. So I've kind of just decided I'm going to do, when that comes up, I'm going to do the building off camera and then just show you what I've done. And then we can do the detail work because I enjoy doing chisel and bits on camera and we can do, we can detail things out. Um, with uh, you guys watching. So here we are. If you remember before, all we had was just like a little bit of this section done. 
I have now made four stories. One, two, three, four. It's going to have a roof yet. I'm going to do domes. I just haven't decided what block to use. And I haven't played with the open blocks builder's guide, which is what I want to use to make the domes. So those are coming up. I haven't decided, I'm, I'm waffling between something blue. A limestone? No thanks. <laughs> I'm waffling between something blue and something blue with gold accent. So I have started, I've made my little walkway around the central tower um, with the skystone blocks. I used slabs here as I mentioned I was going to do. Um, in these interior sections are, is going to be grass of a special type um, and probably mineral trees and maybe silverwood trees and quicksilver and um, glimmering botania flowers and you know those sorts of things are gonna go in these areas here um, this tower if I didn't mention is going to be for our applied energistics um, I'm not quite sh I don't know a whole lot of applied energistics. If you've seen me play any other playthroughs with tech, usually it's with Edward, and Edward is the one that tends to do those things. <laughs> so it'll take a while to learn. Mineral leaves bordering the bottom? Maybe. Yeah. You mean like bushes? Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to bulk out the bottom of the tower yet, because it it might need a little bit more structural support, but then I keep thinking when I say it needs structural support, I keep going, this is the land of the gods and physics, quote unquote physics, don't have to apply. <laughs> you know, it could, it could look like it could topple over in a second and because it's magical, it's not going to. But yeah, so we've got four floors. This one's taller, these two are shorter, and then this one is taller still. So I did that in the potential need for height. Um, physics don't matter in Minecraft. Yeah, but when you're when you're a builder, sometimes it matters whether or not it looks like something would crumble when you look at it or whatnot. None of these have any access things. We're gonna use elevators, most likely. Um, and there's no detail, which I know you guys are probably all saying this is detailed. But to me, it needs chisel and bits. It needs a little bit of variety in the blocks. Um, you know how we played around with a little bit of the chisel and bits here with adding little shimmers in the pillars and whatnot. Kind of just figuring out what I could do. There will be some of that in the blocks, so, you know, to customize areas. So yeah, because um, I keep thinking this looks too plain. I want to perhaps do something in these blocks that surround the um, decorative arch here. Um, something maybe that glows. And I don't know if I'm going to do something where it's just a detailed block that goes all the way around. That makes the most sense to me. And in fact, I could go have it go all the way down to here and have just a detailed like liquid starlight chisel and bit block all the way around each of them so that the entrances glimmer and shine and I just will come up with something cool like that you know I'm definitely for things like that if I can think of a better block than the crystallized mineral here um, I would I could do that but I really like the crystallized memorize chiseled glowstone yeah the challenge with chiseled glowstone is that it's this it's orange and it wouldn't work really well even if I picked a gold um, to as the accent color orange and the gold they don't yeah the refined glowstone looks like it could potentially be a block it's got a bit more yellow to it um, so yeah, it's not quite the right color. Uh, if I wanted to be really obnoxious, I could just pick anti-blocks. 
do like a cyan anti-block. How do you make these? It's just stone and glowstone <laughs> and then you color it. Because anti-blocks are, if you use a lot of them, it's just like death by color. <laughs> really, it's really glowy. So if I used a color that was part of our build, but I think, but I think these can be turned, yeah, they're chisel, so I can chisel and bit them and use bits of them. Yeah, so that's a thought. Anyway, let me show you what I've been doing piece by piece over here. We're going to work on this first because if we need AE, we need power. And I only have the canola oil power over there and that's not going to be enough. So I wanted to make work on a power that I could have here that I could scale. So something I could make bigger and bigger as needed and that I've never done before. So if we were, if you were at Edward's base, you saw what he had as far as his turbines and his extreme reactors. We're not doing that, but his power that he used before that was ethylene by mechanism inside advanced generators. And I have not used mechanism and I have not used advanced generators and looking at them, they made especially the advanced generators, I could understand those a bit more and both of the processes are scalable. I can start small and easily increase the amount of power I need um, without getting confused. So we're, we're doing that. I've just started, like I said, one block at a time, learning how to make the ethylene. And then we'll learn how to make the advanced generator to pump the ethylene into. So if you don't know, ethylene, I'm using potatoes, but it can be made with anything you can make um, the biofuel out of. Biofuel. So this stuff, most of this is saplings, but there's 41 pages here of food stuffs that you can use. I was kind of bummed you couldn't use canola seeds. <laughs> since right now I'm just voiding canola seeds but I'm using potatoes in a card enclosure from immersive engineering which means I did have to do a few quests in immersive engineering here so I did a few quests I needed to get a coke oven because I needed creosote and then I needed to get the treated wood to make the engineers table in order to get the blueprints to make the vacuum tubes that you need to make the cloches. So those are the ones I had to do from immersive engineering in order to get the cloche. Then um, I made an infinite water source from nuclear craft. And there are several tiers of water source blocks this is the one I've currently got. There is a compact one, which does even more. And then a dense one, which does even more than that. Uh, I don't need more than the basic one right now. So we're good. There you go. There's part of my, I can make a better water source when I need it for this process. So it's scalable again. So once you've got water in your clothes, you got potatoes and it's just cranking out potatoes. And that's what this drawers has in it you crush the potatoes in a crusher for mechanism which we can speed up you know when we need more more going we can speed it up I don't have these sped up at all and you can even make factories and make these elite and super super fast so there's again another scalable thing that I wanted to make sure I could do and you just crush them into the biofuel then the next step that you need to do is you need to make hydrogen and to make hydrogen, you just take water and split it and it's two atoms. You got hydrogen and oxygen, right? And you need an electrolytic separator for that. And that's another mechanism machine that you pump water into. Again, I'm just using my little water source that I've got. Give it power and it'll give you hydrogen and oxygen. I'm dumping the oxygen because I don't need it. So whenever it makes, whenever it takes it and splits it, I'm just dumping the oxygen. The hydrogen is now made and our next step is what I'm going to be working on. The next step is to make a pressurized reaction chamber shortened to PRC for most people. 
and what it's we're gonna have to make this today and what we can do then is we pump the hydrogen into it we put the biofuel in and it makes ethylene and then we'll be able to pump the ethylene into a tank and that will be our fuel then we get to learn advanced generators and how to make those, which I've already bookmarked the gas turbine controller, which tells you all the different blocks you can make to create your advanced generator. And uh, we can learn advanced generators because I, I've used it a really long time ago. If you remember my Mayan pyramid build, I don't even remember the name of the pack. It was on breakfast craft servers. Maybe it was their custom. Maybe it was a spilled juice. Anyway, this has been updated. It's got a lot of new stuff to it. So yeah, that's what we're going to be working on today. I know you probably are like, building, building. But in order to um, get our AE in here and for me to want to like live in here, start decorating in here, I need to get power set up on this island. Um, ultimately, he's not going to live here on this mushroom. We are going to use compact machines whenever possible. That is the goal for this um, Land of the Gods. We don't want to see a lot of the tech stuff. We want it to appear magically. We want things to happen magically, which means you arrive in a room, it looks clean, empty, maybe it's got an altar or something in it. But for some reason, it's producing gold and iron and diamonds by the millions. How does it do that? And in the middle, it's got a compact machine that does ore processing for us. That, that's kind of what I want to do. <laughs> so we're going to make a compact machine and put it probably underneath in the bottom of the AE tower. And that will be our power. So we're going to start out with whatever size compact machine I'll need for our first setup. And then as we expand, if we outgrow the compact machine, we'll move it to a new compact machine, blah, blah, blah. Or I can just start out by making ginormous compact machines. I haven't decided yet. Making compact machine does not cost any power. It just costs a lot of resources in the way of iron blocks. So we just have that to contend with to think about. Anyway, let's go back to our base where all our resources are right now and make ourselves a PRC. We also need to decide, I know I'm just using basic transfer pipes right now. Um, we need to probably get into the mechanism pipes. I have mechanical pipes and I don't even know what those are. If they're items or if they're liquids or if they're both or what. So I need to figure that out. <laughs> Oh, that was part of my questing for mechanism. So, so yeah, let's go make ourselves a PRC. And uh, we'll be able to make the next step in our power production over here. I will be using RF Tools power cells for power storage because they're OP and I like OP things. If you don't know, power cells for Marv Tools, there are three versions. There's a simple one, which holds a small amount of, of whatever power you want to call it. There's the one we're using here, the power cell, that's just the standard. And then there's an inf advanced or infused. We can't get to that one yet because I don't have an RF Tools infuser and I don't have the dimensional shards. We could get to that eventually if we wanted to. It just is a larger energy buffer and I think it has a higher transfer rate. The the OP thing about power cells is that you can link them together, which we have a link ID of eight for the multi-block, and anywhere in the world, even across dimensions, it will connect to other power cells that also have the same ID. So you can make this gigantic power source and not even have it all in one space. So every single time I place down a power cell, give it a, a linked card with this one. This is the main one. This is the master. So every single time I want a master, want to link it, I put it in this machine. And I can have power anywhere I want it. <laughs> so 
that's that's why we're gonna do this. We're doing our tools power cells. There are other options. A centralized location for your power storage and then just an input and output. Totally, totally possible to do that. But I think that this is what I want to do. Cause it's magic. We're doing tech as magic. Doesn't that sound like fun? <laughs> Hi Comet Laura, nice to see ya. All right, let's see about making that PRC. I need to get you done one more time to make steel dust. Cause I think we need the steel for the pressurized reaction chamber. Yeah, we're gonna need to make an enrichment chamber first, which happens to be a quest. So do I have any of those basic? I've been getting some things as quest rewards, yeah. We have that, okay, and then these are the mechanical pipes. It says pump rates, so are they liquid only? Looks like liquid, fluids, capable of trans fluids. So that means this should be able to transfer our ethylene and our water. What about the marble bricks with mineral to border the arches? Oh, you know what, that, that might work. Yeah, the liquid mineral or with the mineral. I mean, I could do one of these. Or you mean the liquid mineral? Either or, I suppose. <laughs> so there's a there's a device we need from mechanism in order to change whether it's input or output, don't we? I wonder if there's a quest for it. None of these look like it's for the doohickey. Configurator, thank you, Darkwing. But yeah, none of these look like it's for the doohickey. And that's for getting into advanced machines. Most of it is over here for the beginner stuff. And this is for the even the elite and then the ultimate. Yeah. <laughs> um, configurator, this guy. Um, we need to make an energy tablet. So we're gonna need to make these energized enriched alloys because I'm gonna that's the last one I have from loot rewards. So in order to do that, we're gonna need to make four enriched alloy, which is iron and redstone. Um, does it say how much? Does it use it uses ten redstone and one iron? So when the steel is done. Um, do I have any redstone dust? That should give me four, right? Okay. And then what else do we need for this? Because we're working on you. We need a steel casing. We have the osmium and the glass. I have a little bit of osmium already done, don't I? We have seven. So I need to do some more osmium. Let's get some processed. And glass, I got some from a quest reward that we'll use. Oop. So let's get you going and get you processed. How you doing? You're almost done. I think you can make these faster too. Yeah, there's upgrade options speed, energy, muffling. Oh, that'd be nice if I wasn't using compact machines to store these things. All that noise would not be very magical, would it? I like that we're keeping up on power. And like I said, the only power we have generating right now are two canola oil generators and the RTG that's hidden right there. That's it. That's all we have creating power right now. <laughs> so. Um, all right, what else do we have to, while we wait for this thing to go? We don't need those, so we're fine there for the enrichment chamber. And then I think we have enough for that. We need to make a dynamic tank, which is more steel. 
and we need to make gas tanks which the osmium we could do that while we're waiting and get those made Boop. need two which I think we can make one yeah we've got one and then we've got to wait for more osmium canola oil creates a surprising amount of power well, and then we have to think, I think in this pack I read on the description that they've increased power generation um, so that it's easier to create more power. So... Let's make another one. Alright, so there's our two empty tanks. Can they stack? No. All right. So the dynamic tank, we need the steel, and I need to replenish my redstone because it used it for the crafting. What do I have in here? Oh, yes. Are you done? You are done. You are empty. So let's do this. And are you busy? No. We'll smelt you into some steel. Yeah, I think power cells are the right direction for me because I plan on having all these little compact machines or planning on building a little overworld areas all over the place. And it would just be a lot easier if I need power to be able to just plunk down a power cell and stink a linking card in it. Just make sure that it's chunk loaded. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> a lot easier in my opinion. So, where to start? Let's see where we can go from here. All right, so we need a dynamic tank. We make four out of that recipe, okay. Then we need to make a steel casing. And then, where are we? We need, this is, this is what we're working on. The enrichment chamber, hello. Um, there we go. We have an enrichment chamber and that should complete a quest. The enrichment chamber's mechanisms or doubler, but it also is used in all four tiers of mechanism or processing up to quintuple. The enrichment chamber can also increase the efficiency of infusion materials and increase their effectiveness by eight. So for example, an enriched piece of redstone will count as eight pieces of redstone in the metallurgic infuser. So it's nice if, sounds like it's nice if you need to conserve or if you're just being crazy. <laughs> I didn't want to do. We need. Uh oh. That's a lot of redstone. <laughs> Let's make a whole bunch of this stuff then and get. Because I don't want to dump it. Um, 10 per. There's 360. I should be able to put 36 more in there. And use it up if I calculated that correctly. We'll see, right? All right, um, and then whoa, we didn't get the, did we? We got osmium, huh? Oh, there's a choice award. Let's do these since we're already making more of the enriched alloy. There we go, okay. So for this, we should have everything now. And it's that. There we go. We have ourselves a pressurized reaction chamber. Now we need to make a configurator. And so we need to make an energy tablet. There's the energy tablet. Uh, we need a stick. There we go. 
So now we have a configurator. Let's go give it some power. Um, bloop. It doesn't use this. Uh, hmm. Do I really need to make another machine? Just power the configurator. Mm, an energetic infuser will, will work with it and a wired charger will work with it. Neither of these I have made. You would think there is a mechanism machine. Um, can I chuck it in one of the basic mechanism generators? Is it mechanism has charge pads? Well, that's definitely easy to craft. Is it a quest? Would I get to complete a quest by doing it? Let's see if we can see any of these. Can we make them bigger? None of those look like charge heads. Oh, I forgot about bins. Totally want to use bins. I do not want to use uh, storage drawers. I, I've used storage drawers a lot. Nope, doesn't look like it's a quest. That's okay. Just wanted to make sure if, I, if it was a quest that I would be able to do that. So in order to make this, we need to make another energy tablet. And I think I need to grab the... You stand on the pad and it charges whatever needs charging. Okay, good to know. There's the steel. We're still working on that. But yes, it's gonna use up the redstone, good. Um, there's that. We need to make three pressure plates out of stone. So we might need to go down and grab stone from our... There we go. There's stone. I don't need that chicken curry on me. Alright. Bloop. Need one of you. Alright. The question is... I put you here. Do you accept um, power from? Oh, I didn't know. I'm, I'm guessing mechanism power might not be compatible with... It says FE. FE, FE, does it need power conduits perhaps? little lead lead stone energy ones all right so if we do you and you there you don't connect how about here you connect oh and it's got power yay 
do I need to have you? You are still not charging. Uh... You stink. I don't know what it was charging. What was it charging? Oh, maybe it was charging this. But it's certainly not charging the configurator. Oh, there it goes! Uh, I must have needed to charge up my boots or something first. That's the only other thing I have that needs power in my entire inventory. Oh, it's charging up my reaction chamber too. Aha! Uh -huh. Okay, good to know. Good to know. All right. <laughs> um, I want. I'm pretty sure I still have. Yep, I still have one more flat transfer. Now we're gonna see if that is close enough to do that with. We'll grab you. And we're going to use the mechanical pipe for water because I don't want to use um, extra utilities forever. All right. Maxis has basic energy. What's that from? Just energy conduits. That's Ender IO, right? I think. All right. So, we need to be able to get biofuel into it, we need to be able to get the hydrogen into it, and we need to be able to get power into it. So if I put it right here, let's see, I'm going to put you there, uh-huh, and we can put the machine here, should connect to power, yep. And it should be, it should, when we configure it correctly, um, which, what color is that? Purplish? Is it the dark red perhaps? Yeah, it's the dark red, okay. And then this here, and we need to configure uh, this guy isn't sided. We just need to use this one. Um, configure eight items. How do you change its state? Red so the center is sensitivity. That's not what I want. All right, well, the um, tank we want to fill, what's transporter? The bottom we want to be yellow. Um, this is for items, fluids. There we go. Uh-huh. So now we just need to make that output fluids. My wonder, I'm wondering if it's sided. Like this only comes out one side and this only comes out another. So, and if that's the case, it might be this side that pumps out hydrogen. <laughs> Easy way to test that would be to turn this around. If we turned it around this way, so it was facing this way. No, so we need to figure out how to use you. Um, mech is some configurator. I 
I need to know what the mode switch key is, and I bet that's in controls. Scroll alphabetically to mechanism. Is it item mode switch? Um, let's make it so many things. What else is M? If we do that, and then we do show conflicts, here's all the M's. There's the mode switch. Shift M. No, just M. Okay, then. is in here. Huh. I wonder if there's schematics for the astral sorcery. Ooh. So, cork. Metacraft. That's a mod I've never played with. Um. I I don't know. Why 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 can't I? Sure. <sighs> you are angering me. I need to be able to configure you to pull. And I know that it requires you to use the configurator, but clearly I don't know how to switch it. Official Mechanism Wiki says... This looks old. It doesn't look the same. The configurator image doesn't even look the same. Um, it just says shift right clicking. The recipe's the same. It is shift. We want to pull. And then. I don't know. It currently doesn't have power. Maybe it needs power in order to do this. Why doesn't it have power? Or maybe it's not using power because it has nothing, nowhere to send that. Help me, people! It's gotta be sighted.
you know about as much as I do? Okay. Well, let's read the wiki here. It says it requires a constant supply of power, source of suitable liquid. Um, should either tank fill completely, the separator will turn off. Connecting a pressurized tube or other compatible pipe to both tanks will remove the gas. So maybe it's because the uh, the uh, whatever stuff that's in it is a gas. 